Well, as 2017 comes to an end, we're taking a look back at some of the big headlines right here and around Corpus Christi. So Christic Sunrise anchor Jennifer Lita has a look back at 2017. I am an engineer, and so I see some gaps. The year starts off with a brand new mayor in Corpus Christi. Dan McQueen, the political unknown, campaigned on a promise to fix what's broken in the city. Turns out McQueen seems to be the broken one. Chris Six discovers a number of discrepancies with his resume and credentials. That, combined with a possible conflict of interest for hiring his alleged girlfriend as his chief of staff, quickly leads to the new mayor's demise. After only 37 days in office, McQueen takes to social media to announce his resignation. Uh, Joe McComb. Voters later choose Councilman Joe McComb in a special election to fulfill McQueen's term. It's like a black grayish, gritty material. In May, homeowners in Portland's North Shore Country Club neighborhood noticed something isn't right. A mysterious layer of black dust settled onto homes and cars and patio furniture. The alleged culprit? Nearby steel plant for Stolpina. The company offers to clean properties and says testing shows the dust isn't harmful. Seeking more answers, homeowners file a federal lawsuit, which is still pending. Removing Confederate statues, names and logos became an issue in cities across the nation this year. And Corpus Christi ISD finds itself right in the middle of the controversy. Or did it? In September, the district announces it's removing the Hamlin Middle School rebel mascot and logo amid public complaints. A Six News investigation would later reveal the district actually received only one email about that mascot. As of airtime, a new mascot and logo have not been announced. Well, the 2015 uh, Rotary incident, I was a victim of that case, and uh, that's in uh, litigation right now. Road rage and sexual harassment, allegations facing none other than 148th District Court Judge Guy Williams. In August, a driver claims the judge cut him off and flashed a gun during a road rage incident. Chris Hicks later discovers it isn't the first time Judge Williams is accused of bad behavior on the roads. He's also caught up in a road rage related lawsuit with a man over an incident in 2015. On November 3rd, Williams is removed from the bench after being indicted on two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Wait, there's more. Later in November, Judge Williams is accused of sexual harassment by two women. Each woman separately claims Williams goosed them, allegedly touching one woman's breast and backside, and then he allegedly put his hand around the other woman's waist near her breast and slipped it down her backside. Williams subsequently announces he will not seek re-election. Sticking with the courts, Municipal Court Judge Youngman Burkett is placed on unpaid leave in May when it's discovered she's not a U.S. citizen, which is a requirement to serve as a Municipal Court Judge in Oasis County. Burkett is given six weeks to become a naturalized U.S. citizen or lose her job. She makes it right and, after a City Council vote, legally returns to the bench in August. No! Selection in honor of the dead. <laughs> not Richie! Not my Richie! <laughs> Not my Richie. Hollywood actor and Flower Bluff native Lou Diamond Phillips spends a night in the San Patricio County Slammer. In November, Portland police arrest Phillips for alleged DWI. His blood alcohol level registers at twice the legal limit. Phillips is released hours later and still shows up to the guest speaking engagement that originally brought him back to the Coastal Bend. The day that'll go down in the history books after a 13-year dry spell on December 8th, the Coastal Bend wakes up to snow. The entire region is draped in up to seven inches of snow, although the official tally is recorded at only one inch at the International Airport. Hashtag Me Too. It's a movement that sets off a firestorm of celebrities and politicians falling from grace one by one amid allegations of sexual harassment and assault. Corpus Christi District 27 Congressman Blake Farenthold is part of the fallout. Chris Six previously reported on a settlement Farenthold's office reached with a female employee who accused Farenthold and his office of sexual harassment. In December, we learned Farenthold's settlement was paid with taxpayer dollars. In all fairness, there's literally a law that says suits against congressional offices must be paid through a special congressional fund. Farenthold vows to Chris Six that he will repay the money and plans to run for re-election. That is, until more allegations surface. Therefore, I'm announcing my decision not to run for re-election. In mid-December, Farenthold folds to public pressure, announcing he will not seek re-election but will finish out his current term. As of airtime, the settlement money has not been repaid. And finally, the flu. The year started off and appears to be ending with a fierce flu season. According to the latest numbers from the City County Health Department since October, 
Almost 1,300 people here in Oasis County have come down with the flu, and those numbers keep growing every week with over 400 cases reported just last week. So stock up on the hand sanitizer and cheers to a happy new year. Jennifer Lida, Chris 6 News.